Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video about the unit in Bearcat 980 single sideband. Uh, I've had this radio about a month and I have a whole bunch of videos I'd like to make um, a little bit more in depth, but this is going to be a quick video about just a uh, one-off thing. I'm going to do a an AM transmit frequency alignment. Uh, and So this is going to be something for a little bit more advanced users. Um, not necessarily advanced in CB radios, I'm pretty new into the hobby, but um, a little bit more advanced equipment. Like you can see here, I'm using an Agilent uh, Spectrum Analyzer. This is probably like a $10,000 piece of equipment that most people won't have. Uh, luckily, I have it here at school. Um, but uh, So that's what I mean by advanced, a little bit more advanced equipment. Uh, so um, what else you'll need is uh, I've got a few connectors here, uh, BNC, SMA, uh, a few cables, and some attenuators. These are step attenuators, um, adjustable, uh, so we can put the signal into the spectrum analyzer uh, without any issues. So I'm going to get get set up here, uh, take the radio apart, uh, and just skip right to the alignment um, and uh, get right into it. One more thing I forgot to mention was obviously you need a way to power your radio. Um, in the On the bench top here, it's a little bit uh, difficult. I'm using three power supplies in parallel here, running uh, just shy of 14 volts, which is about what you're going to see in a vehicle while it's running. Uh, and that's where I use this radio, so that's that's the voltage you want to use. Um, and uh, this is not an ideal setup, obviously. I've got a whole mess of wires with the, the supplies in parallel. Ideally, if I was doing some long-term yeah, bench testing or tuning, I would want one big supply or maybe just use a 12-volt uh, battery that can handle the current. Uh, because if I dead key the radio here, I'm pulling uh, quite a few amps, 3, 2, 2, just about there. Even pegs over to constant current on this one, drops the voltage a little bit. But for this purpose, it's fine. Um, but obviously not ideal uh, for a long-term test, so just one, one more thing I wanted to mention. Okay, so I've got the radio uh, set up here. I just wanted to show you the connection. Uh, I've got the um, I've got the radio tuned to I'll flip it over here, channel 20, which is 27.205 megahertz. So I over here on the uh, spectrum analyzer, I have it tuned. Where are we? Center frequency. Um, 27.2 megahertz. Start and stop frequencies is just outside the range. Um, and uh, so our, for our um, for our signal connections, I've got um, this, uh, this adapter uh, on CB radios that uses a PL203 or excuse me PL259 connector. So this is a PL259 to BNC connector, BNC cable running over here to the first attenuator, uh, and it switches over from BNC to SMA through the attenuator. SMA comes around, attenuator again, plenty of attenuation. You can always uh, always lower it uh, and then SMA comes around to uh, the analyzer and as you can see we have a one watt uh, max going into the analyzer so I want to make sure I, I sufficiently lower the uh, power uh, and so if you guys are watching this and you don't you're not really following along that's fine if, if you guys you know out there have a spectrum analyzer and have all this equipment this is second nature this is just an overview of um, of, uh, of what I'm doing so if you have all this equipment then this setup would be no problem so uh, I'm just going to tweak a few more things and then uh, we'll get started on the alignment. Alright, so I've got everything pretty much set up here. Um, if you're doing this, just a quick way to check your frequencies. Just dead key the radio. You can see our blip pop up there of the carrier frequency. Um, and you can ignore the units on the side watts. Uh, this has, um, Spectrum Analyzer has an internal attenuator. And uh, obviously I have these two hooked up. Um, and I have a ridiculous amount of attenuation right now. Uh, 60 dB plus 60 dB um, plus what, whatever the um, spectrum analyzer automatically adds. Um, so that's just our carrier frequency. That's what we're going to be checking. Uh, and so to do the adjustment, um, open the radio up. And this is a newer model of, of the Bearcat 980. Uh, if you go back to maybe about 2012, I think when the radio came out, I, I bought this radio in um, uh, November of 2016. Uh, so if you go back and watch some older videos, um, the circuit board is a little bit different. Um, the, the layout, I think this is like maybe a newer generation of it uh, with some revisions and components moved around. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but on this newer uh, generation, and uh, anyway, even if you have an older one, uh, you can probably figure out which um, component we need to tune. I, I did it just by uh, sort of guessing, and it worked. So um, so this is the newer model. Uh, radio is flipped over. Obviously, you can see the display is upside down. Um, and so we're going to come over here on the left side, and we're looking for this this can right here, which I assume is uh, an adjustable capacitor uh, for changing frequency. And so that's what we're, if you look in there, there's just a little slot for a screwdriver, uh, almost like a potentiometer. And so that's what we're going to be turning to tune. Uh, and so to check, what I've done is I, I set the spectrum analyzer up to uh, peak detect. 
So when I key the radio, you can see our little um, marker down there. Um, uh, marker number one. So when I when I key the radio, that jumps up, and that's finding our our um, our peak frequency, which obviously is the carrier. And so uh, I'm looking over here at that frequency, and we have 27.205, 217 uh, megahertz. So that's 27 megahertz, 205 kilohertz, 217 hertz. Uh, and so obviously um, our uh, channel 20 um, carrier of 27.205. Uh, you know, we're, we're within a range, um, within a good range, I'd say. Um, so to tune, um, what you're going to do, I'll detune it and then show you guys um, tuning it back. Um, you're just going to twist. I don't have a screwdriver that fits, so I'm using the tip of these needle nose pliers. Right now I'm a little bit high, so I'm going to, uh, let's see if I can get this in frame. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise a little bit and see if that, see if that helps. Um, Let's give it a key. Um, and so to make this work, I have to key and press the, uh, the peak detect button. Um, so I press the button, and now it, it gave us our new, our new frequency, 27.204783. Uh, so that's about the same distance away on the lower end. Uh, so that's, um, that means I want to go back in here and, and tune uh, a little bit more. So I guess I didn't really detune it. It was off by a little bit. I'd say this is, I don't know what the margin of error is on these channels in, in the CB radio spectrum, but um, I'd say that's pretty darn good. We're off by about um, 200 or so hertz at 27 megahertz, um, which I don't think would be perceived by anybody on the receive end uh, if you're transmitting. So now you guys know how to do the alignment. I'm going to go back in here and, and tune it up a little bit. Um, I did this before and I got within, I think, about 20 hertz. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do next, and maybe I'll, I'll try, actually I'll try it and I'll turn the camera on, I'm going to increase the resolution of this, of this band here, uh, so maybe I can get a finer, uh, a finer detection on this frequency, so um, check it out. Okay, so I did a little bit of tuning on the spectrum analyzer. Uh, what I did, if I come over to the frequency menu here, I, uh, you can ignore the, s the center frequency, it's a little bit off of the center of the scale, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I increased the start frequency, I had a 27.1 megahertz earlier. And I just sort of use the, if I go like this, I use the wheel over here. I just uh, uh, increased it a little bit, and I also decreased the stop frequency. So now, if I key the radio, you can see the hump that we're looking at for the frequency is a lot, a lot wider. And so the um, the analyzer can resolve a um, a finer peak frequency. So I'm going to roll this up just a little bit more, roll back the stop frequency a little bit. Um, and key, and so you can see the hump. I don't know what it looked like earlier. You can sort of compare in the video. We'll see see what it looks like. Um, so you can see the hump is a lot wider. Obviously, that'll allow the analyzer to um, resolve that um, frequency to um, more precision. So now I'm going to come over here to peak search, uh, and so that that allows our marker to measure the peak. So I'm going to uh, sort of do this with with one hand here. I'm going to key and then hit the peak search button. Key, peak search, and I can unkey. And obviously, it's important not to just dead key uh, continuously. I mean, you could maybe for a few seconds, but right now I'm a little bit power starved with that, uh, those supplies, and uh, we're just going into a dummy load. I don't want to go too crazy. Um, so now we're at uh, 27.205120, uh, so that's better than, it, better than it was before, so that means that our align the alignment uh, that I did was good, uh, and, but the uh, radio just couldn't resolve, so I'm going to maybe do it a couple more times. And no change, so now I'm going to go back into uh, frequency, uh, start frequency, roll that up a little bit more, stop frequency, roll that back a little bit, and then we'll go back peak, uh, and then we'll key and press uh, 27.205134, no, not real, oh, sorry, oh, not much change, do it again, peak search, nope, nothing. Um, so I think we might be in good, sh just about in good shape. I'm gonna dial back the this adjustment point here a little bit. We'll see if that changes. One, three, four, no change. Twenty-seven. Oh, went down a little bit. Two hundred five zero nine four. So that means we're off by ninety-four hertz at twenty-seven megahertz. That looks pretty good to me. Um, so I'm going to stop right about there. Maybe I'll screw around with a little bit more, but I think, I think you guys get the idea. Um, 
So the main, uh, you know, I sort of just dis remembered, or not remembered, but discovered it right now, uh, is that you need to make sure you have the resolution for the um, spectrum analyzer um, fine enough so it can resolve those those uh, finer frequencies. So right now, like I said, we're off by 94 hertz. Um, and so if this is, uh, you know, if you have the equipment to do this, I think this is a great thing to do. Um, help you sound better on the air. Uh, when I got this radio, it, the frequency wasn't off by too much. Um, I don't, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, let's see, it was 205, uh, maybe in by about 500 hertz, a kilohertz or so. Uh, so the alignment was good right out of the box, um, but I wanted to go in there and it was a fun, just a fun little project to do. Um, and the other thing to consider, uh, you know, I don't really remember. Um, oh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously I'm tuning, let me flip the camera over here. I'm tuning it, uh, maybe that won't work, channel 20. Um, you should be able to tune anywhere on the spectrum. Uh, and so maybe what I'll do is I'll just go back and, and check other frequencies and make sure they match up. But obviously that requires changing the spectrum analyzer up a little bit. Um, so anyway, that's, that's about it. If you guys have the equipment to do this, definitely check it out. Uh, fun little project. So uh, leave any uh, questions or comments you have. Thanks.